The topic is the do you have any reservations question. So on my mutual when the jobs post, you made this comment in response to her indicating it was a bad question and why. And then underneath it, you referenced radical candor. So let's get into this. And I want to be very clear, this is not an attack on you at all. What you say, a lot of other people say, and there's some misconceptions with it. So let's just go through the entire thing. The one thing that a lot of us on like HR talk, career talk, recruiter talk, management talk are all a little bit confused by is that there we all have differences of opinions as we should because we're all different individuals. But this is something we almost universally agree on and all of us are sort of always confused at why this keeps getting brought up as some sort of amazing question. I'm a huge supporter of radical candor. I don't always get it right, but I do really like it. But I don't think it was designed for this situation. I think it was designed for feedback and that feedback is based on an existing relationship. So that Y axis is sincerity and empathy and care. And while you can want the best for an interviewee that you just met, you can't really give them meaningful feedback because you just met them. So I can't agree with the conclusion that an interviewer feeling put on the spot and uncomfortable because you just asked them to give you immediate feedback is not a red flag. It actually is a little bit of a demonstration of low self-awareness on the candidate side. And this is why. So I'm going to go through all the reasons why this is a high risk, low reward question. First, it's a wasted opportunity. The questions that you ask at the end of an interview are your chance to demonstrate some of your skills through humble bride questions, through connection-based questions, or to ask really meaningful and depth questions about the company, the team, morale, the financials. And instead what you're doing is asking the interviewer to continue to talk about you, even though that's what you've just been doing the whole time. Second, and Justin also made some content on this, and I'll tag him below, uh, is that recruiting is very rarely done in a vacuum. The interviewer is not prepared to give you any feedback because they just got all of your information, and now their next step is to share, process, and synthesize that information with other members of the hiring committee in order to make a best case determination. Three, I really don't want to dismiss or diminish the discomfort that interviewers feel when asked this question and them feeling discomfort is not a red flag. That discomfort is real. You're asking them to be put on the spot to give you information they're not really ready to give. Fourth is that a lot of managers indicate that this demonstrates intellectual laziness. I have one manager that I know every time they get asked this, their response is, I'm concerned that you're taking TikTok job search advice instead of asking questions that you should probably ask. Do you want to ask another one instead? Fifth is that from a psychological perspective, what you're asking your interviewer to do in your last moments is to focus on your negatives. Sixth is everyone who says, will this work for me, is never a manager, an HR business partner, or a recruiter, the people that make the hiring decisions. Ultimately, all we're doing is giving you best systemic, best practice advice. If you're committed to asking the question, ask the question. We just want you to be aware of the risk.